Hey everybody, welcome back to Welcome to Mintland, the podcast. This is Chapter 8. Welcome to Mintland. The greatest place on earth has blooming green turf. It's always a magical day when you're a mint ray. Welcome back everybody, this is Eric Moran. We are about to jump into Chapter 8. And uh, I certainly appreciate you listening. If you are enjoying the podcast, if you could be so kind and just take a moment and give us a review in iTunes or Google Play, that certainly helps our cause um, in my goal of sharing this story with as many young all-star cheerleaders and children and parents, for that matter, uh, to tell this wonderful story of perseverance and teamwork. So, as mentioned uh, previously in Chapter 7, um, we're jumping into Chapter 8, which is uh, really the time, it, it, it's, it's crunch time for the teams. Uh, Peppermint has been riding a wave. Uh, so far, uh, they have collected three grand championships, uh, which is an amazing feat to get to win a grand champion in any competition much less three uh, in the first half of the season. Uh, there was no doubt um, across uh, many uh, cheer gyms that uh, this mini team was something special. Um, and it, they were really starting to get some notoriety um, along with um, you know their huge mentors during the season at this time, also the P-Trays. Um, unbeknownst to anybody, they would go on to win the world championships in 2015 in the senior medium level. And, uh, the mints just were in awe of peach, uh, all year round. And all they really wanted to do is keep up the momentum that peach had, uh, on the practice mats and on the competition floor. And chapter eight really starts to pick up steam in the storyline on this young group of of kids setting a goal and really wanting to achieve it. Um, you know, this next chapter will get into the meat of the uh, the competition season. I'm really going to delve into, um, you know, their mindset, the behind the scenes uh, in, at Cheer Sport and the, one of the biggest competitions in the world and how they handled everything. Uh, with everything going around, on around them. And uh, this really starts to shed light on how special this team was. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if, if you'd like, we do have a Welcome to Mintland Facebook page um, that you can learn more. We also have a, uh, a web page that shows all of the team videos from the year and photos and um, more about the the book, of course. So feel free to jump on there and do a little research, and we'd love to hear from you. Uh, as I'm doing this kind of as a hobby, I uh, love telling the story and would love your feedback on maybe something to do in the future. So feel free to jump on the Facebook page and shoot me a note. Thanks, and enjoy Chapter 8. Chapter 8, Preparing for the Big Three. All the Stingray All-Star teams headed back to the gym. It was another great showing for all the Stingrays, including Peppermint. The next three competitions are the ones you prepare for all season. All competitions are critical, but the next three are the most important. It can make or break your season. For older teams, the pressure gets ramped up as all Stingray teams want to win an at-large bid or a paid bid to Summit or Worlds. For those who are unaware, Worlds are an invitation-only event that represents the best senior-level all-star cheerleading squads in the world. For non-senior-level teams, everyone is shooting for an at-large or paid bid to the Summit, which is a similar competition for youth and up aged teams that are not level five. Cheer Sport, which is held in Atlanta, Georgia, is one of the largest competitions in the world. This competition is hosted at the Georgia World Congress Center and takes over the entire downtown area of Atlanta. 
This competition hosts literally thousands of cheer teams from all over the world. It's a big deal for all teams, especially Stingrays, as this is really our home competition. Cheer Sport offers 30 bids for over a thousand cheer squads, so the competition is fierce. The pressure starts to build as Cheer Sport looms ahead. Right after Cheer Sport, the Cheer Nation focuses on the next big competition, which is NCA. This competition is held in Dallas, Texas, and is arguably just as big and as important as Cheer Sport. NCA is considered by most as the granddaddy of them all. Winning an NCA jacket is one of the most coveted accomplishments outside of winning Summit or Worlds. After NCA comes UCA, which is held at the ESPN Wide World of Sports in Orlando, Florida. While UCA is not as big as Cheer Sport or NCA, it is often one of the team and family favorites to attend for obvious reasons. It's at Disney World. The big three, as we refer to them as, at Stingrays, is the final time for the older teams to show what they are made of and earn a bid to Summit or Worlds. The competition is rough, and you will see all year everyone is competing to take you out. Everyone wants the bids, the jackets, and the medals. This is one of the final three competitions to get it done. As if that wasn't enough, Varsity added a pre- another prestigious element to the Big Three called the Triple Crown. The Triple Crown was established to recognize participants in all three of the large varsity competitions. The point race extends to all ages and all divisions. You must compete in cheer sport, NCA, and UCA, and the team that finishes with the best point total for all three wins a really nice prize package and a banner to hang in your respective gym to recognize your accomplishments. You can also win the Triple Crown outright by winning all three events in your same division. Most importantly, it is the ultimate bragging rights to say you competed against the very best competition and ended up on top. Since Peppermint was a mini-team, the kids and the parents did not have to worry about the added stress of winning a Summit bid. The team did not qualify due to age as summit bids are awarded to youth teams, 9, 10, and 11-year-olds and higher. Peppermint's team goal was to be in the running for the Triple Crown. It would be an incredible accomplishment for the team and would really give them a story they would treasure forever. Winning the Triple Crown would be no easy task. We as a parent group whispered about the possibility amongst ourselves but we never spoke of the Triple Crown in front of our kids as we are all a very superstitious group. More importantly, I think the parents knew we were watching something develop that was very special. The team, coaches, and the parents were all part of building a group that defined the word team. To me, there is nothing more important than watching your children grow into leaders. Be coachable and treat all of your teammates equally while working together to achieve one goal. It is what defines all successful teams. It is what we were watching when we looked out at Peach when they were practicing. It is what Peppermint was modeling, both from watching Peach and Orange, but also the incredible leadership of the Peppermint coaching staff. Heading into the biggest competition of the year, This team did not want to let their coaches or each other down. There were only a few days left before the the first leg of the Triple Crown. Cheer Sport Week was here, and it was time to dial it in. As a mini-team, the innocence and naivete was showing. Being young and innocent has its advantages. To Peppermint, Cheer Sport was just another competition. What became so special looking back on this season was the spirit of this team. They approached each competition just as the previous. It did not matter to them 
how big of a stage they were about to go on. They took it one competition at a time. I know it sounds cliche, but Peppermint not only lived for the pressure, they thrived in it. Up to this point, the group had been nonchalantly strolling through this season flawlessly. They were focusing on their routine, strong coaching, and each other. Nothing else mattered. The final week before cheer sport flew by. It did not seem we had enough time to get everything perfect. The last day of practice was upon us, and it was time to shine. As the teams gathered for practice, Peppermint knew that there would be a heavy dose of full-out parties in preparation for cheer sport. Full-out parties include multiple teams gathering to cheer each other on as they go full-out for all the other teams and coaches at Stingrays. The exercise achieves multiple things. While you can never duplicate the pressure of going out on stage at competition, full-out parties wrap up the in- ramp up the intensity level and pressure to look flawless in front of other Stingray teams. As Peppermint was progressing through practice, they walked and marked the routine. They worked through some of their stunts, jumps, and pyramid. You could tell they were getting ready to go full out. You could see the excitement and nervous energy from the parents' viewing area. The teams began to gather in front of the mat. It was the usual suspects, Peppermint, Mango, and Peach. As Peach headed toward the mat, the teams erupted in, in excitement. You could feel the love all the way up in the viewing area. As Peach started their routine, Peppermint was glued to their every move. They knew the routine almost as well as Peach. They were hung on every stunt sequence. As Peach went into their elite stunt, you could see the Peppermints bopping up and down because they knew their favorite part of the routine was coming up. As the music blasted, Peppermint leaned in, poised to scream at the top of their little lungs. I began to smirk because I knew what was coming. In unison, the mints belted out, I got 99 problems, but a peach ain't one. Of course, this is one of the iconic voiceovers from the 2014-2015 peach routine that will live on in infamy. Peach finished up their dance and nailed another hit. Peppermint ran out onto the mat next. They were so excited to go on after Peach. It was really neat to see the parents from other teams wanting to stay to watch Peach go full out. The parents would also recruit parents from other teams to come watch Peppermint go full out. It was such an incredible feeling to have the support from the other teams. It's what makes Stingrays such a special place. We as a parent group tried to return the favor whenever possible. As the routine began, Peppermint got off to a strong start. The opening was clean, and they began progressing toward the stunt of death. They made it through the stunt with no problems. After watching Peach, they wanted to be great. After observing the team for the past eight months, three times a week, I could tell the routine was off. Sometimes it's the energy level, sometimes it's the timing. This time I could tell the timing was off a bit. The team progressed into the pyramid, and we had a few bobbles in the pyramid. The dance was fine, but the team knew they did not hit, and the energy was not there. Peppermint finished, and you could tell the team was disappointed in their performance. Peach did not miss a beat, and yelled and screamed anyway, as they always did for all the teams. Coach Ashley briefly spoke to the team. As I was up in the viewing area, of course, I could not tell you exactly what she said, but I'm guessing it was along the lines of, we do not want to end the night on that one. Let's show Peach what we are made of. Peppermint regrouped after the other teams completed their full outs. They started the second time, and immediately I knew they were dialed in. The last full out finished flawlessly. Peach erupted with cheers, as did the other team supporting the mints. Coach Ashley gave a smirk and a little nod to the team. She knew they were ready. Building your strategy 
to plan for cheer sport as a family is truly a logistical marvel. The Georgia World Congress Center has its own zip code for a reason. When over 1,200 cheer teams descend on a competition, the goal is to deflect any drama or challenges and keep everyone as calm as possible. To say the competition is huge is an understatement. If you let it, the competition can consume you. A strict and tight process is the best way to attack cheer sport. Thankfully, it was not our first rodeo as a family. Arrive super early and stay loose is the best plan of attack. This was my first cheer sport as a team dad. My goal was to try and make the families who were experiencing cheer sport for the first time as comfortable as possible. Comfortable parents equal loose and confident cheerleaders. Thankfully, everyone arrived early and the entire team began playing together as they always do. Before warm-ups, the vibe was great. We did have a few kids that were not feeling good, which unfortunately is, is a typical situation for the middle of February. While we attended to the mints that were feeling a little under the weather, coaches announced for warm-ups to be removed. The team headed off hand-in-hand. Hand. They seemed extremely confident as they walked off. With cheer sport, the pressure is turned up immensely. The coaches are always dialed in, but during cheer sport, everything is turned up a notch. Most coaches are involved with three Stingray teams across the program. They have a ton on their minds and many scenarios running through their heads. What they are confident about is the preparation their teams put into practicing routines. At this point in the season, Peppermint can compete in their routine in their sleep. It was just a matter of executing flawlessly. The team wanted to get off to a good start, as the competition was always very strong at cheer sport. Many Level 1 teams come from all over the nation to compete. This was also the first step to achieving their goal to win the Triple Crown. My team dad duties were complete at this point. I'm not going to lie, I get very emotional once Peppermint heads for the warm-up room. My thoughts immediately shift to how incredibly proud I am of all these athletes. I keep trying to put myself in their position, staring out and walking close to 70,000 people that will converge on this competition at their age. Going out on that stage and executing perfection every single time is the goal, but it has to be very intimidating for them. To this point, there has not been a chink in the armor. As I am thinking about Peppermint, the large parent groups walk towards the arena to grab our seats as we part ways to watch my other daughter compete with the Grape Rays. I stop and smirk and think how four- and five-year-olds do this same thing. It's simply amazing. Grape opened up cheer sport with a fantastic performance and a hit. As nervous as I get during competitions, I am always relieved a bit when the Grape Rays go out and do their thing and hit. They are so fun to watch, and when they do well, it helps with my nerves. We headed toward the hall Peppermint was performing at. As we were waiting in the parent viewing area, I noticed the crowd forming to watch Peppermint. We saw a huge support network from all the other Stingray families. I noticed a huge portion of black warm-up outfits emerge, and there they were again, the Orange Rays and the Peach Rays, and many other Stingray teams making their way to watch Peppermint. Words cannot describe the feeling when the teams you look up to at Stingrays come to support your little mini-level one team. As the coaches made their way to the front of the stage, the mad dash began to get the preferred viewing area to watch our team. As I mentioned, we are a very superstitious group. When the team takes the stage, most of the athletes will look for their parents in a specific spot. It is a small thing, but very soothing for them to know that you are there in the very same spot every time. Once I got in my position, I noticed the prayer circle for the coaches was much larger. Normally, it is our four coaches. This time, there were seven. A few of the coaches from other teams 
came over to support the mints as they were about to hit the stage. It was such an incredible gesture as the team ran out on the stage amongst the flashing lights of the cheer sports stage. The team noticed the extra entourage of coaches. They all smiled as they could see everyone. It made them feel special, and it was about to be go time. As the team readied for their performance, you could see them focusing and getting ready. As Coach Ashley gave the thumbs up to start the music, my stomach dropped. The signature music started with a loud, Welcome to Mintland, the greatest place on earth, has blue and green turf. It's always a magical day when you're a mint ray. The team was off and the facials were coming fast and furious. This team was fired up and ready to deliver. The routine progressed over the stun of death and I looked over to some of the coaches who were from out of town and have never seen Peppermint perform before. They were caught off guard by the precision of the stunt and you could tell they were impressed by their smiles. The team went on to an even better pyramid and the dance was astounding. At the end of the routine, the team knew they nailed it. Peppermint bolted off the stage and they were ecstatic. The crowd was buzzing from the performance. As we were walking out of the viewing area, I overheard a parent from another gym say, Wow, that was a mini team? It was a very nice gesture from the gym and it showed great sportsmanship. As the team gathered to be released to their parents, Coach Ashley did an amazing job speaking with the team. One of the most important life lessons she teaches her teams is to remain very humble and focused. She reminds the team that they have to work on a few things in the routine and that this is a two-day competition. One day does not make a national championship. She wrapped up her speech and asked the team if they had any questions. One of the mints asked if they did even better on Sunday. Could the team get Dippin' Dots? Coach Ashley looked over at me and smiled and asked if I could help make that happen. I said, absolutely. The team roared with excitement with the challenge that was before them. The gauntlet was thrown down. Dippin' Dots were now on the line. The team scurried off in their separate ways, some to watch and encourage family members or friends on other Stingray teams competing. Some went off to meet friends from around the country that they have made at other competitions. Some went home to unwind and relax for day two of the competition. After about an hour, I started receiving texts from the parents. How do you think we did? When are we going to hear what place we are in after day one? Have you heard from Coach Ashley yet? I loved our parent group. The entire group was so excited for this team, and every parent knew how to get the most out of their child and get them to work together. I was excited to find out myself. With a competition this large, it would take a few hours to find out the results for day one. I would take this opportunity to have some fun with the parents to keep the mood light. I would respond, Yes, I have the results, but I've told, been told not to share them, when I really didn't have the results. Silly things like that kept the mood light. We watched some incredible teams at Cheer Sport in the Mini Level 1 division. It was going to be close if we were going to be at the top for day one. Later that afternoon, I received a text from Coach Ashley. She was very excited. Peppermint was in first place after day one. They were one step closer to compl completing their first challenge of winning cheer sport. After reading the text, I looked over to my wife and gave her a nod that I had some results. I did not want to break the news to my daughter until the time was right. I also had to think of the perfect way to share. Sharing information to the team is always critical. I know all the parents were waiting on pins and needles waiting to hear from me. I also had the added element of my younger daughter in play here. 
I was always cautious to make sure I was equally excited no matter where my daughters placed after day one. It was always easy if both teams were in first place. It is a very delicate situation if the teams are anywhere other than the first place. Or worse, one is ahead of the other. My daughters watch our reaction very closely, and they both want equal reassurance from us. I was hoping to receive news from my younger daughter's team momentarily. After a few minutes, we got the text. The grape rays were also in first place, but just by a small amount. We would leave out that part when sharing the information with my daughters. As we normally do, we go to lunch, and I begin to craft the text out to the peppermint parents. After I craft the text, we share the good news with my daughters. They immediately begin to decompress as they hear the good news. The tension is lifted off, if only for a few hours. They enjoy their lunch and start to enjoy the moment for only a few hours. They have both been here before, and they know what to do. Just a few minutes later, all of the texts start pouring in from the peppermint parents. Of course, they are ecstatic. Everyone then shifts their focus to Twitter as the news from the other Stingray teams start to pour in. People feverishly refreshing their phones glued to cheer updates looking for the hieroglyphic code that only dedicated cheer parents can understand. Everyone looks for that elusive three-letter word from cheer updates that is only given when earned. All teams yearn for their team to be followed by hit after they perform. It's a nod from a very well-respected critic in the cheer world. As day one winds down, I craft a text message to the parents reminding them of the agenda for the following morning, and also reminding them of the importance of a good night's sleep. Keeping the team in good spirits and well-rested is a huge advantage headed into day two. Morning arrives, and we load up the vehicle for day two. To my delight, there were no texts this morning involving sick children or people running late. My prayers were answered, and the team had a relatively stress-free trip into the competition. As the team arrives at Cheer Sport, the team is in great spirits. All of the parents begin to make eye contact with each other to make sure they are truly okay. As a cheer parent, you need to be good at hiding any drama that may be lurking behind the scenes. I have seen it happen all too often. A forgotten bow, a skirt, uniform, or shoes can spell a nightmare. As team dad, I have to check and make sure I have it all covered. Extra lipstick, band-aids, extra bows, shoelaces, socks, nail polish remover, cotton swabs, Pepto-Bismol, and children's aspirin, anything you, you could think of, I had loaded down in my infinity backpack, ready for that look of desperation from a parent or coach. You have to be ready at all times. Luckily, this morning, it was just a few magic tummy pills for nervous peppermints. On day two for large competitions, the vibe is a little different. Some of the team is loose and are playing. Most of the others like to stay quiet and relax. I would like to think that they are focused on their routine, but these are six, seven, and eight-year-olds, so who knows what they are thinking about. At such a young age, they know what is on the line. They have been coached well. It is about doing their best and focusing. They know they will need to come out with a ton of energy to impress the judges. All they really want to do is make Coach Ashley happy with their effort. As I scan the room... I make eye contact with Beecher. He was playing in the hallway. I walk over to him, and he looks up at me and asks, Do you think we will do well today? I look back at him and I said, I know you are going to be fantastic. He smiled back. A few minutes later, we heard the announcement for warm-ups off. It was time for day two. The team joined hands and headed toward warm-ups. The Stingray parent contingency cheered as Peppermint headed down the hallway. My heart sank with nerves, but I was confident in the team's ability to get it done. The parents all headed toward the arena. 
as all the mini teams began to perform, they all took it to the next level. Day two scoring is different than day one, and things can change dramatically with a bobble here or a fall there. You need to hit on both days to be considered in the top three. As the parents all watched the rest of the competing teams, many eyebrows were raised at the level of competition this year. These teams were good. Peppermint was going to need their A game today. As the team completed their routine, it was time for Peppermint. I was shocked by the swarms of people coming to the VIP viewing area to watch our mints. We had a huge contingency from Stingrays following us up to the stage. The crowd carefully allowing the parents of the team to get their spot and then everyone else quickly fills in around them. It was easy to get very emotional at the outpouring of support that was happening. As the coaches made their way from behind the stage, there was a large coaches entourage that followed. Many of the other Stingray coaches again came out in support to watch Peppermint. I noticed Coach Ashley confidently came out from behind the stage. I made eye contact with Coach Ashley, and she gave me a quick nod. She knew what I was going to ask if I had the chance. I would always ask her how the team looked. She took pity on me by giving me a little nod. The team came out on stage, and each of the mints made eye contact with their respective parents and then proceeded to get mentally prepared for the music to start. They seemed focused and confident. A few of the coaches were slamming the mat to get the attention of a few that were lined up just a bit off. This had to be perfect. A split second of eerie silence falls on the arena. Everyone's eyes turn to Coach Ashley, waiting for her to give the thumbs up to cue the music. All of this seems like an eternity as a parent. And when the music blares, welcome to Mintland, and they were off. Day two to me is always a blur. At this stage of the year, I know the routine like the back of my hand. I can also tell the vibe of the team after a few seconds. As I scan the entire mat, I like what I am seeing from the team. The energy is electric, and the team looks like they are having a blast. The execution is flawless, and the confidence is beaming. The stunt of death left the crowd stunned, and the pyramid lit up the stage. As the team started into the dance, you could tell they knew they were close to being done, and the excitement took them to the next level. The team was beaming as Beecher began his iconic role that was set to the music, I Just Can't Wait to Be King, from The Lion King. At the end of the routine, Beecher hit the final pose with his beaming smile. The crowd erupts with cheering and applause. I looked over to my wife, smiled, and said, I think they hit again. As you leave the performance, all of the parents confer to make sure everything, everyone saw the same thing. In a live competition, there is so much to see and so much going on that it is, is easy to miss a bobble or a fall. After talking to most everyone, we all agreed Peppermint hit on day two. Of course, this was a consensus from the parents. The judges may have a different perspective on the performance. We needed to wait and see. As we waited for the team to emerge from behind the stage, the parents' area was buzzing. We were all very optimistic about the team's chances. I walked back behind the screen, and the Peppermints were watching a replay of their performance as a team. As the final seconds of the dance wrapped up, I could see the team jumping up and down as they were excited with the performance. Coach Ashley said they did a great job, and they did the best that they could. They all started jumping up and down as the words of admiration from the coach they have learned to respect so much meant the world to them. Then, with their surmounting energy, you knew what the next question was going to be. One of the more spunky peppermints started with a coy-looking face and began to speak. So, Coach Ashley, since we did our best yesterday, you mentioned we might be able to get Dippin' Dots if we did our best today. The team erupted in jeering and screams, asked if they won their Dippin' Dots. Coach Ashley looked over at me and said, 
I think they may have earned them. What do you think? I nodded in approval, and the entire team erupted in cheers. Many of the peppermint began doing their happy dance. As many cheer parents know, many of the world's problems can be solved with a healthy helping of dipping dots. The team was excited, and they ran toward the vendor to redeem their prize. We started making our way back to the award ceremony. Normally, there are a few hours between the competition and the award ceremony. Since cheer sport is such a large competition, they have to compress the award ceremonies, and we had a shorter window of time this year. The awards began about 45 minutes, which seems like a long time, but while walking back, it seemed like we were rushing. The Georgia World Congress Center feels like you were walking literally for miles to get from one end to the next. It's because you are. It is a long walk, not to mention you are weaving in between thousands of teams, parents, and athletes on the way back. Coach Ashley informed me I needed to remain with the team after awards as she had to get to her final team and get them ready for competition, and Coach Kelsey and Jessica were going to be performing with their respective teams. As the team assembled for awards, I headed back towards the back of the group. There, waiting for me, as always, was my buddy Beecher. This time, it was a little different for Beecher, as the size and scope of this competition was a bit much for adults to take, much less young children. Cheer sport is huge. Couple that with thousands of people and chaos, it can be a bit intimidating for children. Beecher took my hand, and we started to head out for the award ceremony. Since this was Beecher's first very large competition, he had quite a few questions for me. Mr. Eric, are all these people here to see our award ceremony? I said, well, Beach, they're all here to see all of the teams that have competed today. You guys competed against a bunch of great teams. He said, okay, but there sure are a bunch of people out there. I said, yep, but a lot of the people... Are all mommies and daddies of the teams you competed against, along with brothers and sisters and grandmas and grandpas? Beecher then began to talk about his sister's teams. I really wish my sister's teams do well as well. I really want them to do well. I could tell Beach was a little nervous with the entire situation. I changed the subject to a topic I knew would make him feel more comfortable. I asked him what kind of dipping dots he got. His face lit up, and we carried on our conversation until they were instructed to file onto the stage for awards. What struck me as odd the whole time I was with Peppermint was not one of them asked me if, I, if they thought they would win. They were just satisfied with doing their best, and that was all that mattered to them. The awards ceremony began, and the tension mounted. As the MC was announcing the finishing position, I noticed the team locked arms in unison as a team. With each team name that was announced, Peppermint squeezed tighter and tighter. I can only imagine what is going through their little heads as I scan the entire arena from front to back of the awards stage. The final few teams are left to be announced, and Peppermint is visibly emotional. They are hunched over together with locked arms as a group. The MC announces the second-place team, and Peppermint stays composed as a team in unison to honor the second-place team who has worked just as hard as they have all year. Peppermint gives the team a round of applause and cheers for them. As the second-place team makes their way off stage, the MC announces, Your 2015 Cheer Sport National Champions, the Stingray All-Stars Peppermint. The team went berserk and the crowd gave them a standing ovation. Peppermint went up to gather their hardware, which was a huge banner for the gym and a trophy. As the team left the stage, it was time for the team to gather in the champions area to be fitted for their national championship jackets, and for me to distribute medals to the team. The coaches had a few minutes to celebrate with the team, and they really made the team feel special. Together, We helped gather all the correct jacket sizes for the team. We waited patiently as 
as a team, while all the other national champions from the other divisions had their time in front of the photographer to complete team photos. We watched as the MC announced the team as national champions to the waiting parents, grandparents, and friends waiting in the champions area. The kids were excited and were asking me if they got to go up on stage and do that too. I smiled and said, you guys sure do. The team proceeded to go out on the big stage to take group pictures with their national championship banner and trophy. Their faces said it all when they walked out as a group. The photographers lined them up, and they all wanted their picture taken with the big trophy. They were equally as excited to take a group picture with their big sisters behind the scenes. It was a very special day for all of them as Peach went on to become cheer sport national champions later that day. That concludes Chapter 8. Thank you for listening to Welcome to Mintland, the podcast. Uh, Next chapter is Chapter 9, NCA. And the number one question I always get asked about this book is, why did you write a book about all-star cheerleaders? And uh, starting with Chapter 8, but even more so uh, Chapter 9, uh, on through the end of this book, uh, you if you're listening in uh, for chapters nine on, you will learn exactly why I wrote this book. Um, you know, every team is special when you watch your kids go through a journey like this on an all-star cheerleading team or any team for that matter, baseball, basketball, volleyball, whatever sport your your children enjoy. But th- this was different. This was very different. Um, and, you know, the, the next chapters coming up uh, are exactly why I wrote this book. It's relatable to any person, um, whether a child, a young adult, um, somebody going through college, uh, or an adult. Um, what this team endured through the next few chapters uh, is exactly why I wrote this book, because I didn't want them to ever forget uh, this journey and what they accomplished um, and how they bounced back from what you're going to hear in the next few chapters. And it's relatable to everybody. It applies to everybody's life. And I really wanted to capture this journey. So that is my answer to the question of why I wrote a, che- a book about all-star cheerleaders. Is It, it is the journey. Uh, the, the book wrote itself, as I always say. So uh, next coming up, as I mentioned, is the granddaddy of them all, uh, NCA. Uh, the Peppermints pack up and fly and drive on to uh, Dallas, Texas. And... Um, it's you know if you're reading or or listening um this this is the second jewel in the triple crown and what happens here uh nobody expected in a million years and um i i'm looking forward to you uh listening to the rest of the book thank you we uh currently have over 1000 downloads which is uh pretty cool um that people are uh you know listening all over the place i have uh put the podcast now on youtube as well i had a few requests for that so uh if for some reason you don't have a podcast app um uh you you're more than welcome to find welcome to mintland on youtube and I've had a few requests uh, from all over the world. We had this, a listener from the Philippines that I uh, exchanged a chat with uh, earlier this week, which was really cool. So keep enjoying uh, the story. I, I look forward to putting more podcasts out there and getting your feedback. And uh, we'll, we'll talk with you next time on Chapter 9. Welcome to Midland. The greatest place on earth has blooming green turf. It's always a magical day when you're Midland.